Okay, folks, welcome back. This is uh, part two of the section 8.3 video. And uh, folks, I'm really, I, I really need to apologize. Um, that's not how you spell arithmetic. Uh, you folks deserve better than that, uh, to be honest. And that should be spelled like this. I sincerely apologize. I hope that we can get beyond this and that you can still trust me as your math teacher. Uh, let's move into page two of the notes. Uh, page two of the notes, we're going to start talking about uh, matrix multiplication. And I have a question for you. Does matrix mul multiplication work like addition and subtraction? Addition and subtraction were pretty intuitively obvious. We did it just kind of like you thought we would. We would add the same position or subtract the same position in each matrix. Uh, we did say that the matrices had to have the same dimension. If they didn't, then matrix addition and subtraction are undefined. So let's now talk about matrix multiplication. Do they work the same as addition and subtraction? The simple, quick answer is no. They do not work the same. And this little picture right here tells you how they work. Um, it's going to be you're going to have to sit and stare at that for probably 15 minutes to figure out what that means. So the best thing to do is an example problem. And I'm going to go ahead and start with example four. But but first, I want to tell you that um, there's some critical ideas here in these two notes. Uh, the number of columns in the first matrix must match the number of rows in the second. So if I'm multiplying, let's let me show you an example. Um, let's say I'm doing a, a matrix that is two by three. And I need to multiply that by another matrix. Well, that other matrix must have the same number of rows as the first matrix as columns. So that would have to match with this three. So it'd have to have three rows, and then it doesn't matter how many columns it has. Uh, so I'll just call that uh, C. In fact, this first dimension here, too, can be anything we want it to be. So just the two inner dimensions, the, the, the columns in the first matrix and rows in the second matrix, have to match. Uh, the product, or the output of the multiplication, will have the number of rows from the first matrix and the number of columns from the second. So if I do something like this, the resulting matrix would be an R by C matrix. Okay, let's get into an example. We're going to do the product of A times B. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite those two matrices. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then matrix B is one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the procedure for matrix multiplication. The first position in my new matrix will be 1 times 1 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 5. So it's going to be 1 times 1 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 5. And, and hopefully what you can see that I'm doing there is I'm working across each of these elements multiplied by each of these in that order. So that's going to be the first the, the first row, first column, that result. Folks, before I do any more of this matrix multiplication, I want to just go back and, and talk about this idea right here. So if I'm doing matrix A, which is a 2 by 3 matrix, and I'm multiplying it by matrix B, which is a 3 by 2 matrix, the result should be a 2 by 2. Okay, so now back to this uh, matrix A times B. To get the first row, second column numbers, I need to multiply the first row of this matrix by the second column of this matrix. And what will that be? Well, we'll have 1 times 2 plus 2 times 4 plus 3 times 6. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the, well, I guess I'll go ahead and just show it to you like this. Uh, for the second row, first column, I will do this row times 2 times 3 times 4 times 6 times 8. 
times this column. Maybe it'd be nice if I color coded all these for you. This is the yellow, this is the green, and now for the blue. I'll have 4 times 1 plus 5 times 3 plus 6 times 5. And last but not least, I'll have a second row, and we'll pick a nice light color here for highlighting. Second row, second column, we'll go right here. That'll be 4 times 2, plus 5 times 4, plus 6 times 6. To get your final answer, you do have to do the multiplication and addition. So I have 1 plus 6 plus 15, which is 22. And I have 2 plus 8 plus 18, which is 28. And we have 4 plus 15 plus 30, which gives me 49. And finally, we have... 8 plus 20 plus 36, which is 64. Now, is matrix multiplication tricky and tedious? Yes, it can be. You have to kind of remember the pattern of how these colors match up between the two matrix uh, matrices you're multiplying and then what the product is. Uh, I will give you a hint. Uh, your calculators are really, really efficient at matrix arithmetic. They can do the addition, the subtraction, the scalar multiplication, and the matrix multiplication. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Great way to check your answers and make sure that uh, your result manually matches up with the correct result. Okay, now we're going to move into a new idea here. It's called an identity matrix. An identity matrix um, is basically a matrix um, that has ones diagonally. Okay, so what does that mean? If I have um, a, a matrix A that is an M by N matrix, and I, I, I multiply a M identity matrix by A, that has to equal A times an I sub N matrix, where M and N are the number of rows and columns uh, respectively to get the, uh, the matrix multiplication to work out correctly. So. Uh, an I sub 1 would look like this. It's got one row and one column. An I sub 2 would look like this. You would have two rows and two columns where you have ones diagonally from upper left to lower right. An I sub 3 will have three rows and three columns where we have ones diagonally from upper left to lower right. I can ask you to illustrate the idea of identity matrices and their properties um, by example five. So matrix A is a two by three matrix and I'm asking you to show that the I2 matrix times A equals A. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and then let you practice on the matrix multiplication. So the identity matrix, the I sub 2, looks like this. If we want to multiply that by matrix A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, remember, when we do matrix multiplication, the number of rows in the first matrix, excuse me, the number of columns in the first matrix has to match the number of rows in the second. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one for you all the way through, and the next one I'll shortcut it. But um, I'm going to do the, the same color coding that I did before. I'm going to do this row times this column. And that's going to give me 1 times 1 plus 0 times 4. For my... Um, the ne next position, I'm going to do row 1 times column 2, and that'll give me row 1, column 2 in the product matrix. So I'm going to do 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 0 times 5. 
And my third column will be row 1 times column 3. It's going to give me 1 times 3 plus 0 times 6. Second row is going to be the same procedure, except I'm going to do 0 times 1 plus 1 times 4. 0 times 2 plus 1 times 5. 0 times 3 plus 1 times 6. Hey, guess what? When we multiplied I2 by A, we just got A again. So this is the same idea as the identity property of multiplication in algebra, which says if you multiply something, if you multiply a number by something equal to 1, the answer is going to be the original number. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and set this one up and do it for you. I'm going to pause the video just to save on some time here. Okay, so um, the second example here in question 5 is matrix A times the uh, I sub 3 equals A. And I've shown you all the work for that. I'll let you uh, pause the video and, and take a look at that to make sure you understand uh, why that is true. The other thing I'd like to mention... Um, Identity matrices are always square, meaning the same number of rows and same number of columns. So I sub 3 means you're going to have three rows and three columns. I didn't mention that uh, when I talked about the identity matrix up here in the gray box, but that's important to mention now. Okay, last question uh, in this um, set of notes is to solve, um, basically solve an equation, or excuse me, solve an equation evaluate an expression c squared minus 5c plus 10i sub 2 when you're given the matrix c okay so let me go ahead and set this up first thing we have to do here is multiply c by itself so i'm going to have 1 negative 2 3 4 and if you remember our rules of matrix multiplication above the number of columns in the first matrix 2 has to match the number of rows in the second matrix, too. So the only way you can square a matrix is if it is square, meaning it has the same number of rows and columns. So this it represents C squared. Then I have to do minus 5 times C. So this is a scalar multiple. And then I have to do plus 10 times the identity matrix I sub 2, which has two rows and two columns. So I'll start with this uh, squaring of a matrix right here, and I'll do the matrix multiplication. Um, I'm going to, we've done this a couple times now, so I'll go through this one a little quicker. My first row, first column is going to be this times this. So that's going to be 1 times 1 plus negative 2 times 3, or 1 minus 6 which is negative 5. My first row, second column is going to be this times this, and I'm going to write that result right here. That's going to be 1 times negative 2, or negative 2, minus 8, which is negative 10. For my next position, Row 2, column 1, I'm going to do this row times this column. So I'm going to have 3 plus 12, which gives me 15. Last but not least, we're going to have this row times this column. 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 4. So that's negative 6 plus 16, which gives me 10. Okay, so that's probably the trickiest part of this whole thing. Now let's move into the scalar multiple. That's pretty easy because all I have to do is multiply 5 by every single element in that matrix. So I'm going to have to subtract 5, negative 10, 15, and 20. Here I have another scalar multiple. I have to do 10 times each element in the identity matrix. That's going to be 10, 0, 0, and 10. 
So now this is just one big matrix addition and subtraction problem. Uh, I'm going to combine each position with its with the same position in the other matrices. So for row 1, negative 5, minus 5, plus 10, which is equal to 0. Almost forgot that negative sign, folks. Please don't do that. Oh, that, uh, that would be tragic. Um, for row 1, column 2, I'm going to do negative 10, minus negative 10. So that's negative 10 plus 10, plus 0 which is zero. So I'm done with row one in, the, in my final um, matrix for this question. All right, let's look at row two, column one. I have 15 minus 15 plus zero. That's a zero. And then I have 10 minus 20. That's negative 10 plus 10, which is another zero. Wow, that was a whole lot of work just to get a zero matrix, a two by two zero matrix. Folks, that's it for section uh, 8.3, uh, part 2, and I hope you have success in WebAssign. Best of luck to you.